Okay, let's work one last big example. And uh, here, uh, sort of unlike the rest of the examples, let's, I wanna put a little bit of financial context into the problems, okay? So, uh, you know, you may have noticed that the homework problems look a little different than the ones we do in class. And the biggest reason why that is, is because when we're working these problems, uh, the examples for le in the lecture, I strip away all the context, I just give you numbers and I say, what's the present value if you have these inputs, right? But that's not very realistic and that's certainly not how the problems are gonna look throughout the rest of the class. So we have to then sort of practice looking at a problem within the context of a financial setting and understanding that it's the same sort of stripped down problem uh, that we worked as the examples in class. And so once we are able to recognize that, we can then pull out the information that's necessary to solve the problem in exactly the same way that we did. Uh, we just have to be able to see the problem within the context of the financial setting that it's in, okay? And this is this is what this class is all about. So this, this is not like a wasted skill. This is a hugely valuable skill. Um, and, uh, and so it's part of your learning finance in this course, okay? So we're gonna look at a, a comprehensive example. We're gonna do sort of one example of all the different uh, things that we've learned. We'll value an annuity, we'll value a perpetuity, uh, we'll do uh, different kinds of annuities and then we'll add it all together and we'll say this is the value of a company, okay? So let's say that we are a company, we run a company, and we want to purchase another company. And this other company that we want to buy, it's going to generate projected revenue or profit, cash flow, uh, after taxes of 10000 15000 16000 18000 22000 over the next five years, okay? Again, um, uh, so this is the, the, the cash flow that the company itself is going to generate. And then at the end of the five-year period, I can sell all of the company's assets for a million dollars. So they've got machinery, they've got equipment, they've got a warehouse, they've got some trucks and computers. I'm going to sell all of that and just close the company down. Uh, I am in the company that we run, we, uh, we, have, we have shares outstanding. So we owe our shareholders dividends and we pay it out at a growing rate of 1% each year. Uh, and we just announced a dollar 25 per share dividend. Uh, and we have a thousand shares outstanding. So we have a thousand shareholders. We promise to pay them a dollar 25 each. And we promise them that in addition, every year we're gonna grow that dividend by 1%. Finally, we have an annuity due existing in the purchasing company that pays us a thousand dollars per year for the next 35 years. So you can think about this, like maybe we, uh, in the company we have, we rent out some office space uh, we rent it out really cheaply for $1,000 per year. Uh, assume a discount rate of 7% for everything. Uh, what is the value of the company that we want to buy? And what is the value of the total company if we buy it? Right. So the combined account. Right? Now, the value of anything, as we talked about, is the present value of its future cash flows. And so the, what we should offer to pay for the company is the present value of the five years of cash flows plus the million dollars that we'll be able to sell the assets for. That's what the company is worth. And so that's what we should offer. Well, that or less if we wanna try and get a good deal. Now, there are a few ways that we can try to get at the value of these cash flows. We know that we can take the present value of each cash flow one by one and add them up. We also know that if these cash flows act like an annuity or like a perpetuity, that we can use the annuity formula or the perpetuity formula to save ourselves all those extra steps. And there are two, two things that will define whether these cash flows act like an annuity or a perpetuity. And the central one, of course, is that they need to be either level cash flows, so they're always the same, and we can see that that's not true or they need to be constantly growing. So they need to be growing at a steady rate. So every period, the growth rate needs to be the same. And we can see that that is also not true. So for instance, the growth rate from year one to two is 50%, but the growth rate from year two to year three is much smaller than 50%. It's probably only uh, about 10%, a little bit less. So it's not a steady growth rate. It's not a steady cash flow. So we can't treat this as an annuity or a perpetuity. 
which means all we have left to do, and this is why I, we learned the te these te techniques in the beginning of class, or in the first example, is we need to take the present value of each cash flow one by one and add them all together. Okay. So that's what we'll do. We'll take the present value of each cash flow. So we'll start with the present value today of, and I'll write cash flow one. Okay. And that cash flow has a future value of $10,000. It has a discount rate. So the rate is 7% per year. And it occurs one year in the future. So our N is one and we compute the present value of that cash flow and we get 9,345.79. And as tedious it is, is, as it's going to be, we have to do that for all the remaining five cash flows. So the present value today of cash flow two, well, cash flow two has a future value of 15,000. It has an rate of 7% per year and it occurs two years in the future. And we compute the present value here and get 13,101.60. Present value of the third cash flow, where the third cash flow has a future value of 16,000. Discount rate still 7%. This cash flow occurs three years in the future. We compute the present value of this cash flow and get 13,060.76. So we do the present value of the fourth cash flow, whose future value is 18,000. Discount rate still 7% per year, but the end is four years in the future now. We compute the present value of the fourth cash flow and get 13,732.11. Now, the fifth cash flow is a little different, and that is because we have two cash flows that occur at the same time in the fifth period. We are going to receive the $22,000 that the company is generating. But at the same time, we're going to sell all the company's assets at the end, right? So I get the revenue for the company at the end of the year. And then imagine that immediately I just have a buyer who steps in and pays me a million dollars for the rest of the assets. And so what I can do to save myself some time is I can, because these cash flows happen at the same time, I can add them up and treat that as one cash flow. Instead of doing two separate present value problems, I can simply do one of the total future value. And so the total future value is the 22,000 that the company earns plus the million dollars for a $1,022,000 future value. Discount rate is still 7% per year and this cash flow occurs five years in the future. We can compute the present value of this cash flow and get $728,671.88. Okay. So the total value of the company or of any asset is the sum of the present values of all the future cash flows. So what does that mean? To solve for the, what I would offer to pay for the company is the total value of the company. And to solve for the total value, I simply add up all the present values. And if I do that, I get $777,912.14. So what should I offer to pay for the company? I should offer to pay this or less, right? No more, because I know exactly what the present value of the future cash flows is gonna be, and it's not gonna be worth any more than this. Part two of this problem says, if we spend the $777,912 to buy this second company, what is the total value of the combined company? And the total value of anything is the sum of the present value of all the future cash flows. So the combined company is gonna have these future cash flows and we know the present value of those. It is also going to have uh, dividends that are being paid out and an annuity due. Okay. 
right? So we need to figure out all of those. Uh, so the first thing is there's going to be a present value of the shares of the company. Right? And shares are uh, considered, we value shares, and we'll talk about this in the, in the next lecture. So I won't go into a lot of detail here, but uh, shares are paid out as a growing perpetuity. That is how we value shares, uh, because we assume that they could potentially go on forever. And the formula for growing perpetuity is the cash flow, next period's cash flow, divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. And all that is given, the cash flow of a share is the dividend paid, $1.25, divided by the discount rate, 0 0.07, and we're told that the dividend growth rate is promised to be 1%. So the present value of a single share is $20.83. But we have 1,000 shares outstanding. So we have the total present value of all the shares equal to $20,833. Okay. And then the final asset, the final set of cash flows that we have is an annuity due. And to solve for an annuity due, the first thing we do is change our payments to be at the beginning of the period. So we press second, payment, second, enter. And we convert to beginning payments. And then we plug everything in just like any other annuity. We are told there is a payment that we receive. So that's a cash inflow of $1,000 per year. We receive that payment every year for 35 years. IY is our discount rate, just like for everything else, 7% per year. And we compute our present value of this annuity due and get 13,854. Okay. So the total value of the combined company is the sum of all of these present values of all of these cash flows. And of course, this example is a little bit contrived. Uh, you know, I just want to give you an, ex uh, an excuse to see all of the different problems, all of the different uh, types of uh, problems that we learned uh, in action in some financial context. We will go into a lot more detail about valuing shares, about valuing stocks, uh, about valuing bonds and companies as the class goes on. So don't freak out if this seems like a complicated example. Really what this is, is an example of each of the things that we learned with some context uh, that we haven't quite learned uh, in full detail yet, okay? So I add up everything. I add up the annuity due. That's 13,854. I add up the shares, the value of the shares, that's 20,833. And I add up the value of the new company that we just bought, and that's $777,912.14. And the total value of the company is now $812,599.14. Yeah.